Proxmox is a powerful virtualization platform, but once it's set up, the big question is, what should you actually run on it? Whether you're building a home lab or just trying to get more out of your hardware, choosing the right services can make a big difference. In this video, I'll go over five of the best services to run in Proxmox and explain why they're not just popular, but actually useful. Home Assistant has become one of the most popular smart home management tools that you can use. And there are a ton of different devices that you can run it on, but Proxmox is my absolute favorite. It's easy to set up and it's basically done by downloading and importing an image of the operating system, which I'll leave instructions for in the description. Home Assistant is great, but there are two main reasons why Proxmox, in my opinion, is the best place to run this. The first is that you're running the full Home Assistant operating system, which means you'll have access to the Home Assistant supervisor. The supervisor manages everything for you, from installing and updating Home Assistant itself to handling add-ons like MQTT, Node-RED, and more. It also takes care of system updates, backup management, and monitoring your system's health. If something crashes or stops responding, the supervisor can automatically restart it. There's also a full section for add-ons and tools that are all tightly integrated into Home Assistant. Without the supervisor, you'd be manually managing containers, dependencies, and updates, but when you're using it, you don't have to. That's a huge benefit, but the second is backups, which ironically, the supervisor can help with as well, but I'm talking about Proxmox backups. In Proxmox, you can configure different types of storage that you can use for backups, like using an NFS share with a NAS, or even Proxmox backup server, which we'll talk about a little later. This is great for all of your VMs and containers, but it's especially good for Home Assistant, and here's why. With just about any smart home application, reliability is incredibly important. This is one of the applications that is a major hindrance to your life when it stops working as you get used to using it daily. For this reason, having a rollback plan is very important. While you can manage backups in Home Assistant itself, you can also roll back to the prior night's backup in Proxmox, assuming it's configured that way, and you'll be back up and running in less than a few minutes if you run into any problems. This protects against various issues that can happen inside of a home assistant, but also ensures that you have a full operating system restore point in the event of something going wrong. This has saved me countless times, and as you start to customize Home Assistant, you increase the likelihood of running into issues and having a backup like this becomes very important. The next service is Pi-hole, and while there are different locations that you can run it, running Pi-hole in a Linux container or multiple Linux containers is a great option. I did a video on a pretty advanced Pi-hole setup utilizing Pi-hole, Unbound, Nebula Sync, and Keep Alive D for not only DNS resolution and ad blocking, but syncing and high availability as well. This can all be set up in Proxmox, runs very, very well in a Linux container, and will have the same benefits from a backup and restore perspective as we talked about earlier. If you don't think that backups like this can be handy, Talk to a few people who upgraded from Pi-hole version five to six, and they'll convince you otherwise. Next, if you're using a full Proxmox cluster or even a two node Proxmox cluster like I am, you can set up high availability, which will automatically migrate these containers to a separate node if the primary node goes down. If you utilize that with Keep Alive D and a secondary device like a Raspberry Pi, you'll have a very sophisticated setup and should never run into any issues with DNS going down. While this can all be set up in Docker, due to the Pi-hole setup script, it's a lot easier and in some cases, better to run it in Proxmox. The next service is an interesting one, mainly because it's not really the correct way of doing it, but it's Proxmox Backup Server. Now, Proxmox Backup Server is designed to run on bare metal with dedicated hardware, but in home lab environments, we're constantly looking for new ways to utilize what we have and avoid running additional hardware unless we absolutely need it. That's where running Proxmox backup server in a virtual machine with NFS storage comes in. Again, 
Not the way you're supposed to do this, but it's been running for over six months this way in my environment with absolutely no issues. And I have a video on how I did it in case you're interested in setting it up. Basically, you install Proxmox backup server as a virtual machine, then create a data store using a local folder that's mounted to an NFS share on your NAS. At that point, the VMs and Linux containers will be backed up to your NAS using NFS, but Proxmox backup server is technically running as a virtual machine. So the data is stored on the NAS, but Proxmox backup server is running as a VM. You'll have all the benefits of Proxmox backup server, meaning fast backups after the initial backup completes, but more importantly, deduplication. My deduplication factor is around a 20 right now, which means that for every 100 gigabytes of backups that I'm storing, it's the equivalent of two terabytes, which is crazy when you start to think about it. I sync the backups from my UNAS Pro to TrueNAS, so I have two copies, and it's all done using Proxmox backup server as a virtual machine. Not necessarily something I'd recommend for enterprise or possibly even small business environments, but for a home lab, it's been great. The next service is going to be highly dependent on the processor that you have in your Proxmox server, but if you're running an Intel-based CPU with integrated graphics, you'll be able to utilize Plex, Jellyfin, or MB with hardware transcoding and can do it all inside of a Linux container. This can be helpful because it's not always the easiest to configure hardware transcoding on other devices, depending on exactly what device you're using. For example, if you're using a pre-built NAS operating system, Sometimes you have to adjust permissions on the GPU device at DevDree so Jellyfin, Plex, or MB can access hardware acceleration. If you're using a Linux container, there are a lot of steps too, and I don't wanna lie. It can get confusing based on the CPU as you'll have to install the correct GPU drivers. But I did it on an N100 mini PC, and I'll leave written instructions in the description on how you can set it up. Overall, it's a great place to run it. And if you have an Intel-based CPU and are running into streaming issues that you think can be resolved by utilizing hardware transcoding, Proxmox is a great place to run a media server, as you'll still store the media on the NAS, but Proxmox will do all of the heavy lifting, assuming you're using a NAS. If you want a preview of what hardware acceleration can do and how it can help, Check out the video on a mini PC home server I built as it has a preview of exactly what hardware transcoding does. And you'll be able to see how a video that I couldn't stream worked fine after I implemented it. The final service is Docker, but this is going to be completely dependent on your setup and requirements. You can configure Docker and Proxmox in a virtual machine or a Linux container. And while the virtual machine is the recommended approach from the Proxmox team, as it provides better isolation from the host, and for that reason, technically better security, many people, including myself, have run Proxmox in a Linux container for years without problems. The benefits of this is extremely low resource utilization. Now, if you have a full home server with plenty of resources, you should run it in a virtual machine for the benefits it provides. But if you're using something like a mini PC or even just a device with minimal resources, it's going to be hard to find a better place to run it as the resource utilization for this will be very, very low. I have run Docker and Proxmox for years and it's my preferred place to run it. But the biggest deciding factor for you is generally going to be virtual machine versus Linux container. And I'll leave instructions on how to set up both below. But again, to be clear, the recommended approach is a virtual machine. And if you have the resources, that's where you should run it. But if you don't, you should explore a Linux container as you're going to save a lot on the resource side and overall, it's going to run well. There are a ton of people out there that run it on a Linux container. Now there are a ton of other services that you can run in Proxmox. And this is just a small list in the grand scheme of things. But in my opinion, these services are best run in Proxmox, assuming you have a device capable of running all of them. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't run them somewhere else, but if you're going to go through the effort of configuring Proxmox, having full backups of each of these services that can be restored in a few minutes is super helpful and not necessarily something you'll get with other devices, which can help with management, maintenance, and more. I know I left off a lot of services that you're all probably using, 
So I'd love to hear in the comments what you're running, but I hope you got some value out of this video. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments. But other than that, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.